everyone. Thanks for coming to the Jacksonville State University 2020 Faculty Show Lab event. Um, we just wanted to do this so that you guys could hear some of the faculty talk a little bit about the artwork that they have made this year um, and give you guys a sneak peek into the show if you weren't able to make it personally. Um, but if you would like to, the show will be up until this Thursday and you can make an appointment on the art department webpage. Um, so now we'll let our department head, Seth Johnson, tell you a little bit about the work that he's got displayed. Okay, so besides being the department head for the Department of Art and Design, I'm also the director for Longleaf Studios, which is our uh, documentary-based film production studio here at JSU. And so one of the projects that we've been working on for the last year is uh, two different documentaries. The first one we just finished is called Forever Wild, the James D. Martin story. And it's about one time Alabama Congressman James D. Martin and uh, all that he did for the state of Alabama. After his time in politics, he was appointed uh, by Governor Guy Hunt as uh, the Commissioner for Natural Resources for the state of Alabama. And during that time, he won a landmark uh, settlement. Uh, he led in a lawsuit against ExxonMobil and won billions. I mean, the, the, the original case was in the billions, but the actual settlement was somewhere in the millions. But uh, millions of dollars were awarded for the state of Alabama because of uh, the oil companies not paying appropriate taxes. He also was instrumental in making sure the state's boundaries were all the way out to Sand Island so that we could get all the tax revenue from the offshore drilling. But he also revitalized the uh, Alabama State Park System and then he spearheaded the creation of the Forever Wild Land Trust that has preserved around 260,000 acres of land in the state of Alabama. So this documentary tells his story. And uh, this is a little preview of it as well as a poster that we designed for that documentary. So next, how about uh, we have Professor Bryce Lafferty. Sure. You ready? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So um, this wall here is my contribution to the faculty show. Um, and you know, the faculty show is something that you, you think about periodically throughout the year. What am I going to create? Uh, what am I going to show off? Um, you know, for the students and for the community and for the other faculty that are here. And this summer, I was fortunate enough to uh, participate in an artist residency in Kansas in the Flint Hills. And an artist residency is, a, is an awesome opportunity that people who work in the arts can take advantage of. Uh, writers, poets, musicians, um, anyone who works in the arts can participate in an artist residency. And it's, it's basically a sojourn. It's a brief stay at a location where you're supposed to be able to have new experiences and um, have the time and space to create work. And uh, this, uh, these are a departure from what I normally do, um, but I was in this new place in this new landscape that's very different from um, Alabama and, and you know the south and the east. It's, it's flat and um, there's a lot of sky and the landscape itself has a really interesting geologic history. And I decided that I needed to do something different. I needed to uh, do some quick paintings where I could just study the, the landscape at a, at a pace that seemed fitting for just having 10 days to, to work there. So I began taking my watercolor paper and paints and just sitting outside at different times of the day and at different locations and uh, just doing color studies and trying to make some interesting brushwork. And uh, a lot of the brushwork and the, the use of color comes from experiences that I've had and, and people that I've studied with and uh, friends who, who also work in watercolor in, in a very loose way. So it was experimental and it was it was fun to try these out. Do you have a particular favorite? Um, yeah, I think I think I like this one the best. I think um, I don't I don't you know, I won't say how much I like any of them, but of all of them, I think that one is uh, that's the one that I would hold on to. I think the color just 
came out right and the, it it really reminds me of the morning when I looked out over the fields where we were staying. Um, so and I tried something new with mounting these on on some plywood uh, with some with some gel medium um, and flattening them out. Originally I planned to put them in frames, but the frame kind of cut into the image in some places. So um, I, I had to try to find a new solution to yeah. the presentation. It's really cool. Yeah, really this, nice. this one in particular here was inspired by a, a professor I had at the University of North Texas. Uh, his name was Rob Ertle and he was a landscape painter and he he was very expressive with his brushwork and um, he did this enormous watercolor painting. It was like 32 feet wide and for a watercolor painting that's ridiculous, right? <laughs> it was done on several uh, sheets of paper put together and it depicted Glencoe Canyon and he used a lot of dry brush and interesting marks to show the wind and I was going to say it reminds me of the wind from yeah. the Midwest. Yeah, exactly. And in Kansas, it's it's when if it's not windy that it, it feels weird. <laughs> and uh, you know, was trying to capture some of that. Um, and I think you did very beautifully. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, John's here. Oh, John. <laughs> hello, hello, Professor John Olds. So tell us about these works. Um, these work, this work is um, really, these are, these are just kind of sketches. They're just studies and they're an evolution of work that I began back in 2017 um, based on uh, some landscape maquettes that I had made during an artist residency in Iceland. So this is porcelain and it's really just experimenting with the material. Um, so this is the porcelain that I usually use for my pots and it's mixed with a nitrocellulose fiber. Mm. So it's an organic um, insulation and that gives it that gives it a, a green strength mm -hmm. so that it um, porcelain doesn't like to be built really thick. So I was experimenting with trying to be able to work on a larger scale. Um, and then going back to an interest that I'd had um, back in graduate school of glass casting. Mm -hmm. So all of these pieces are glass that's cast into uh, ceramic or in some of these cases a ceramic shell mold. Um, and in situations like this, it's a, it's a plaster silica shell that's been broken away to reveal, to reveal the glass and then uh, into a ceramic shell that becomes part of the sculpture. So a lot of this is just figuring out uh, technical details and things like coefficient of expansion uh, and real boring technical stuff that need a lot of um, experiments to get them to fit so that they don't break off and become dangerous weapons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but the forms themselves uh, sort of developed alongside the pots that I've been making for a couple of shows and that the more these just became objects, it was really refreshing because then the pots could kind of go on their own oh, parallel cool. track yeah. and, um, you know, just be pots. They didn't have to be everything to anybody. Um, and these could just. There's something contemplative them. about them. Were they contemplations as you were making them? They have a, they have a really nice, like a nice tidal pool. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, nice, sort of the reflecting, yeah, the reflecting pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I see these as sort of meditative objects. Mm -hmm. It's cool to hear you talk about the engineering in them. Well, that I'm still working on. I'm still working on it. It's like, you know, I wanted these to have a really uh, a, a solid, a presence, um, a real thick mass. And even, even still, these are hollow. These parts are all double wall. Oh, they are. Yeah, they have, yeah, oh, they I thought they be, were. You know, oh, like, wow. Um, and these pieces over here are hollow as well. So and then dealing with the technical things about the glass where the deeper you, the thicker you cast it, the more problems you have with shrinkage and expansion coefficients. And then it, you don't get the clarity like in these, you don't get the clarity that you get in some of the smaller ones. So it's, it's, it's really just a rabbit hole right now. Um, 
but I haven't had a chance to show anywhere. Mm -hmm. this, is this is the first, first time that you've... To, yeah, because yeah, I, I don't see any of this as finished work. This is just, oh, I... you know, direction. I mean, this is just studies with materials. So. The Impressionists, you know, made it, so why not these? <laughs> Yeah, sure. I mean, so I, as most of you know, I'm not only an art historian, I, I used to do or I guess I still practice art, but I've always been interested and fascinated with the concept of landscape and memory and place and memory. And the idea that, you know, we we have these sort of snapshots in our minds of places that we experience and how much they contribute to our identity and our, our, our you know essential being in other words so i've been thinking about this for a long time and i decided the only way that i was going to be able to explore this concept is in small works because there's just so many places that have such you know kind of an, an essential memory to me so i started working with these small relief blocks and i just started sketching places that I think about when I think about a place I've lived, a place I've experienced, particularly, you know, in the Midwest where the skies are just as big as the landscape. And um, and so I started doing this series. And the one that in this that changed was this one in particular of the Twin Cities. Um, I lived in the Twin Cities for two and a half years for my master's. And there was a place right next to the university campus that was a lookout point from the river and so it was literally the cross the bridge between St. Paul and Minneapolis and I was doing this work when the protests in the Twin Cities began so I decided you know I was so impacted I am continually impacted by these events and I decided to somewhat alter this um, this print to sort of reflect what I was feeling because now the memory of the landscape has changed has been altered by new events, which I think is very important to understand with landscape and memory. So this is an ongoing series that I'm going to continually to contribute. Um, these are just artists group. I haven't done any additions yet, but I hope to do so in the future. So I saw that Professor Christian Dunn is around the corner. Yes. <laughs> if, you'd like to, if you'd like to discuss his, his prints, did he, did he step he, out? Yeah, he had to go back to class. So well, we can we can talk well, a little bit talk. about yeah, his. Yeah, yeah. These were um, part of a series that he did play as the highest form of research. Mm -hmm. um, and he did these illustrations with his son, who is, is he five, four or five? Mm -hmm. um, oh. uh, yes, so Levi would draw doodles and illustrations and Christian came in and kind of finished them. Um, and this is an exhibition that he had at the Gadsden Museum of Art. What I love about this is uh, something that we always talk about with collaboration and art and design and and how, you know, Professor Dunn, who mm -hmm. is a practice professional designer, involves right. his his son, so it becomes a collaborative event. That's something more, much more personal. But you can tell in the shapes how much there is actual sort of parallel, you know, mirroring and collaboration right. among the strokes. Right. And I think that's that's this, you know essential those... part of that play of collaboration. Yes. Tiny robot and squiggles. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. The tiny. The tiny robot. Yes. Yes. And the element of play also is apparent in the typography too. You have the you have the element that it's yeah, it's maybe part sketchiness, but also obviously very well designed and yes, sort of very tweaked and refined. Mm -hmm. Yes, intentional strokes is a good is a yes. good example. So we are just we figured we would just sort of go walk around and show you the other examples of works that are here because we don't have the artists here themselves to sort of talk about them, but we want to be able to showcase them. So since we're already on the design <laughs> train of thoughts. Graphic design professor Chad Anderson and these were a series of commissioned CD covers that are currently in circulation all around the world. Um, Which is amazing. Yes, so this is more of the the practical side of graphic design. Product design. Yeah, product design. Object design, yeah. Yes, 
functional design. Um, um, did you know that, you know, your records and your vinyl covers and everything all had a designer? Well, most of them did, so, yes, you know. Yes, <laughs> most all of them. But do you know that there's a whole thought process that goes behind the conception and the making of these? Do you have a particular favorite, Morgan? Um, I think I like this one the most. <laughs> Why do you like this I one also, the most? I like the, the combination of design and photography in this one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is nice. So some of this is, which one were the ones related to the, the did he have the one with the jazz musician? on here and something that I've noticed particularly in Chad's works and I don't take me by to heart on this because he's not here to defend himself or confirm <laughs> it but you know the fact that it's a lot of his he's very well tuned synesthesia mm -hmm. meaning it's the idea that design and art has um, sort of musical uh, parallels and how you can hear music and then translate that music visually. And when I look at these covers, I sort of feel like I'm looking at this one in particular and, and kind of get a sense that this could be a musical sort of improvisation yes. that you might encounter when you think about, oh, look, it's <laughs> remote <laughs> improvised music. Look at that. Ah. So we have a synesthetic experience here. But a lot of these, you know, think about how music can translate to the visual elements. All right, so next. You can start. We have some examples from our newest, uh, newest faculty member, Sarah Ellis. She's our new printmaking professor. Um, this is a series of food she did. She works a lot with food. Her show, um, Heavenly Bodies is going to be on display in the Roundhouse. That's our next show opening next week. Um, but I love her use of 2D and 3D elements. So the, explain the 2D and the 3D interactiveness here. Uh, the relief, it says it's a posted relief laser cut. Um, so you have the you have the printed part and then you have molding paste that is used as a three-dimensional element. Yes. You like know, it's like icing piped, on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like she did use. So um, she, she has some culinary skills gel. on top yes. of printmaking skills. <laughs> <laughs> just thought I'd just kind of give you. What I love about these works is the dimensionality between color and material. Yes. Yeah. And to even the 2D oh, let's look has, at the other one. Even the 2D elements have a certain texture that complement the 3D aspects. Mm -hmm. And while we're here, let's talk about one of our other art instructors, Mary Dunn, who has done an editorial illustration for School Colors and Honest Conversation about racism and education and what we can do about it it's for the DFW Child magazine. And what I love about this, and I told her this in person, so she knows she's not here to defend herself either, but <laughs> is the line quality. There's something, I mean, it, it could be improvised line, although we know it's not. Something identifiable about it. A lot of her illustrations have a very gestural quality, but they yes, still gestural, feel finished. That's the word, gestural. Mm -hmm. All right, so I thought we would go on and talk about our other, just kind of briefly show these other ceramics works, and then we could talk about Professor Malgaroy's yes, this is, paintings. Uh, these are from one of our Maritai faculty, Steve Laux. Um, these are crystalline skirted vases. Um, he was saying these are the more feminine vases that he created. Of this is that series. because of the shape? Mm -hmm. the yes, the, the, quality, the hourglass figure of the yes, shape. Yes, um, and I love the crystal line. Instead of the male gray, male gaze, we have the male glaze. Yes, <laughs> male glaze. <laughs> Sorry, that's um, my lame joke oh, no. for the day, you guys. <laughs> um, and yeah, he made these this year over quarantine, so this is kind of the direction that he's going with his work this year. Yeah, I heard um, from Lynette, mm -hmm. his wife, and also yeah. another ceramicist, that he's been working with these glazes yes. all summer long, and there's something crystalline about them. Mm 
I guess in a very similar way to, to John. Yeah. yeah. So one of our, our, our painting professor. Yes, Allison McElroy. I guess we have to go far back. Do we know the title of this one offhand? It is. I love this work. Oh, very fitting, very fitting. Allison Austin is a very loose and gestural bar right, let's, yeah, let's look at some of these brush yeah. strokes. She's very free with her work. I love the the most part. Of, I love this whole work, but I love how she treated the roots yeah. and the layering of the colors here. Mm -hmm. um, and and what is one of the things that I've noticed with her work is her play with perspective. Mm -hmm. She loves to take these very interesting and very playful and very fascinating perspectives, and she has taken on sort of the worm's eye view, if you will, yes. <laughs> uh, and literal worms in the mud, <laughs> but taking it from the roots to look up. Look at that. You almost have to kind of squat down here and take a look up. Very beautiful work. She's been working a lot with art and science and nature, and a lot of her works have to do with that and so she loves to utilize um, natural elements these are both oil paintings but she's also been doing um, mushroom spore prints she does a lot of um, teaching where she teaches students how to use elements from nature as part of as the materials medium. yeah yes. yeah so her, my favorite is when she works with tar yes. in her paintings yes I love the dirt works paintings that she has them do mm -hmm. Just look at this, how she treats, and you can see the malleability of the, the paint. So while we're here, we must we must talk about our very own gallery coordinator and her works. Would you like to tell us a little bit about these uh, photographs, Morgan? Sure. So I got my degree in photography from Jacksonville State University um, in 2017 was when I graduated. Um, I love doing portrait work, environmental portraits. Um, most of the time I will be inspired by a location and then find a model or a client who can kind of make my vision come to life. Um, so when I saw this water wheel, I thought about a widow um, who's been left alone to, to manage this property by oh, herself. Really? So it's yes. a whole, there's a narrative behind it. Yeah, there's it. a whole narrative. Um, so and I wanted to use the white gown to kind of represent her fragility and her innocence. Um, yeah, and I, I thought the black and white would lend itself to more emotion. Um, the cropping in here, the ordering of the compositional elements are great. In a way, looking at this one immediately when I was looking at this with the, the camera here, I saw this as something coming up mm -hmm. behind yeah. her. her yeah. <laughs> and so there's there's sort of a, a fear factor here, mm -hmm. an element of fear. Yes, there was supposed to be kind of like a forlorn feeling. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I like to make a lot of triangles with Oh, with the lines. Bodies. Are you, so, do you enjoy Alfred Stieglitz's? Yeah. <laughs> so, and I love the, one of the mm -hmm. half moon shapes, but these are also semi -tiny. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's reflected kind of in her body shapes as well. Definitely. Oh, yeah, these are beautiful. Thank you. Well, while we're on the photography, should we talk about our other yeah. photography? Mm -hmm. So over here we have sort of the wall of photography professors. <laughs> so we'll we'll start with uh, Professor Doug Clark, and you're the you're the photography expert. Can you tell us more <laughs> about what you see here? Well, these are digital photographs, um, and they are using artificial light to create. This is natural element series. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that is clay. That mm -hmm. used it does to, look like to yeah. Secure the branches. And each one has a different color temperature. Um, oh, interesting. So he used artificial lighting to kind of create the mood of the photo. You should look at the other one too. That one's oh, so both of them, yeah. This I guess it's a lot warmer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I like about these is, I mean, upon first glance, you're not seeing them as sort of these close ups. Mm -hmm. 
of you know branches and and clay you're seeing them as entirely independent landscapes that are not man constructed in this way even in the background kind of remind me of of an undersea oh yeah Um, yeah i don't know what we would call that notion floor scene yeah yeah Oh, definitely, especially with the cool, because mm-hmm. it sort of got that blue reflective. Yeah. All right, so tell us about the technique that we're seeing here with Professor Sarah Miles. Yes, this is an alternative process um, of cameraless photography called cyanotypes. So basically, you coat your paper, or this is fabric, mm-hmm. um, you coat it with the, chem- with the cyanotype chemicals and it is light sensitive, um, sensitive to UV light. So you, she took the actual uh, object object, and laid it over the coated mm-hmm. substrate. Mm-hmm. Um, the fabric you, is the substrate. Yes, and you put a pane of glass over it to keep everything in place. Oh, so she had glass over this. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> well, I mean, you wouldn't want to have sure wind, right? Oh, right? Yeah. You don't want it to move. It's um, the print up here. So the sun exposes the object onto the, the detail. Yes. What I'm what I'm and amazed by this is the detail. A lot of detail um, with sheer or sheer items. I mean, you would have to have it not move, right? If yes. To achieve this level of yes. detail. And the amount of detail um, can depend on exposure times. So if you're using a UV box and you have a controlled UV light source, then it's easier mm-hmm. to determine your exposure times. Oh, OK. But she, I'm sure she did this outside um, and just in the sunlight. And so that can make things a little trickier. So I'm sure it took many tries to <laughs> It's beautiful. The one that she. I want to know. I wish she was here because I'd love to hear more about this title. Not so much a whisper. Yeah, this is her grandmother's. Oh, okay. yeah. But yeah, I was. Too. And then this inclusion of these. What are these insect wings up here? Yeah, the cicada wings. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, there's a lot of layers of meaning. I feel like. Yes. And the fact that it's like hung like a sort mm-hmm. of a fabric banner. Yeah. A scroll almost. Yeah. All right, we're almost done, you guys. We only have a few more. <laughs> uh, these are Let's talk. Um, graphic design professor Jane mm-hmm. Reynolds. She's also um, in charge of our MFA program. And it's the Talisman Collection, prints and patterns for stationary paper um, or goods. So those can be used for cards or just stationary paper letterheads, things like that. It features plants, animals, and symbols that are thought to bring good luck and ward off people. Oh, wow. She's another one of our professors who likes to work with food as a subject in her illustrations, um, which I love. So we have figs and olives. What I love about her, and I don't know if these are recent because I don't know much about her, her yeah. past work as much, but she does so much of these layering of kind of collage-like mm-hmm. elements, and sometimes they're actual objects. So yes. if you look. These are cut out. Pages yeah, so in here. They look like they're, yeah, I mean, but then they're designed, so they're part of the print, yes. right? Yeah, so it's a flat, everything's flat 2D printed, but. But her ability to kind of trick the eye mm-hmm. to make it appear that it's got more dimensionality and it looks like a collage yes. of elements. I mean, I'm reminded of all of our, our collage. Yes. <laughs> Paper collier. I'm not going to get in our history lesson, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I love these. Mm-hmm. Something also, you know, that we've seen in a lot of her work is this uh, kind of gestural. There's a there's an yes. ephemerality with her work that I've I've noticed, which I love, mm-hmm. and it sort of connects with the materials and um, that she's actually depicting. So yes. flowers and food, you know, mm-hmm. things that aren't going to last yeah. a long time, but she captures them with such transience. I yes. guess is the word. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've I've noticed, you know, like with a single stroke, she can outline a fig. This fig. Yes. Look at that. It's a single stroke. Yes. To outline the the element and capture the essence of the object.
All right, so moving on over here. We have Anna Dobbins, who is one of our instructors of art appreciation. She's also an art historian, you know. Yes, yes. So we get along great. <laughs> um, she did a canvas print of her photography, which I love this print. I talked a little bit about how I love triangle shapes in my in mm -hmm. photography and this. Well, and the it reminds me of um, both Moholy Naj and Rodchenko's photography, mm -hmm. these sort of, you know, extreme perspectives and extreme lines and sites of viewing to kind of capture these, you know, rigid yeah. angles yeah. that you see here in these triangular shapes. <laughs> the contrast here really brings out those shapes mm -hmm. in a great way. I see that we have some comments. No glass, no glass, but we do have some, <laughs> none of the glass, but we have Dr. Professor John Oles's works <laughs> over here. Ron Baker is the last. Yes, and then, um, well, we have two. We have oh, one over yeah. here. So let's let's look at those objects since we're we're yeah. talking about objects. Um, Anita Stewart. She does a lot of assemblage, um, and she's kind of like Allison. She loves to take things out of nature and uses them in a little bit of a different way than Allison. Allison will like paint with mud and tar and things, and Anita likes to preserve the specimens that she finds um, and turn them into something. Let me get some close-ups of these. Yeah. I like to think of it as like extending the life of the object. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I love that she uses words and the combination yeah. of word and object, you know, such is the purpose of this work to inspire ambition, to stimulate the imagination, to provide the inquiring mind with accurate information told in an interesting style and thus lead into broader fields of knowledge. So really about taking those objects and imbuing them with deeper meaning. Yeah. She's also got these two. Yeah. These are memories. And and that's the thing with objects, especially objects that are worn and yes. you know, old and new. And they're they're they sort of carry these these uh, memories yeah. of use. Mm -hmm. And so how apt to use a key and then what do we have here? What is that on the side? Like a lock of sorts? It's almost like a lock, yeah. Then an object from nature and then combining it. Jesus. This interesting. So many delicate objects. Mm -hmm. I kind of wonder where she gets them all. <laughs> Here we have a uh, medal for St. Christopher, which is the you know, patron saint of travel. And you can see that element. This almost is traveling. Yeah. And last but not least, of course, yeah. is one of our other instructors of drawing, art yeah. appreciation. I mean, yeah. I pretty much, Foundation. yeah, Professor Ron Baker does it all. He does. So this is a, a watercolor that he's done. Let's see close up. What I love about this is there's a there's another that kind of the element of not fear but discomfort. Mm -hmm. You know, with the enclosing trees yeah. that don't have leaves, and it's and yeah, in the shadow. But then everything's sunny in the foreground. Let's give you an, a backwards. Imposing. Yeah. <laughs> but you, the viewer, view these as sort of at a safe distance. But you have to sort of imagine yourself in the composition. Um, and if anybody has any questions, if you'd like us to show any of the works again, we're happy to do so. We have a few minutes left over. Um, I think we've seen everybody's works up close. I figured I would go over a few more so you could see if you came a little bit late, but feel free to ask questions in the Q&A, or if you wanna see someone else's works, we didn't get to see these up close. And to type in the Q&A, you'll see that um, off to the side, of your viewing screen. And if you're looking on a mobile device, the q and I think is, yeah, it's a little box with a question mark in it. And you're more than welcome to click on that and then type in a question that you have. So some of the works. I just, yeah, I had this sort of meditative response to John's work. A reflection pool is what it yeah, is. This one is super interesting. And it's almost as if 
this one has sort of a general, you know, I'm going to take this material and put this other material on top. We'll look over here I know everybody we talked about. As many of you know me, um, the one who's holding the camera, <laughs> Mary Springer, I'm from the Midwest, so I was particularly excited to see these works. Bryce teaches both plain and watercolor class, which is where you paint on site, so these are very... Yeah, you could tell. Very plain air. I know the word of the day is sort of ephemerality, but yeah. <laughs> you could tell that these works were done. I mean, they they appear to be quick sketches, like mm -hmm. the impressionists, you know, impressions. They were it was meant to be a point of criticism, but yet they capture a transient moment in time. And this, and as many of you know, being outside, the light, the air, things change in an instant. So capturing this moment. Have a similar quality to Jamie's, and mm -hmm. you know she had one circle to capture the essence of a fig, and Bryce does that here. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, we will make sure we could, we could probably have this video up for as a recording in case anybody missed the yes. missed the okay. show and the reception, and and post it for anybody. But if nobody has any questions, which you know maybe we answered them all <laughs> with our expert commentating. Yes. <laughs> Um, thank you for joining Morgan and I and others for attending our virtual, our first virtual, well, second, if you, we had yeah. a second here, <laughs> first virtual, second virtual JSU faculty show reception, which is really a great way to kind of adapt in this current climate where we're not allowed to be here in person because normally this would be a space that would be full of people and you could ask these questions about these works in person. So have a wonderful day, everybody, and we appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thank you.